Hey there, lifestyle property people. Uh, today I wanted to talk to you about the different ways that property investors measure returns. So you might have heard about the kind of terms that I'm about to talk to you about. Terms like gross yield, like rental return, return on investment, the return on capital employed, the, um, the capital return, the capital appreciation, What's the difference between all of these terms? That's what this video is about. I'm going to explain it all to you. So first thing to say is that there is no right way of doing it. Everyone has a different way. Uh, and it's just about the way that different people analyze the, uh, the property, the risks and the returns. From a gross yield perspective, which is the most common way of analyzing properties and measuring returns, uh, a lot of people in London do that and the reason why a lot of people in London do that is because people in London tend to sometimes buy properties with cash and if you buy with cash and if you buy without a mortgage then realistically your gross yield is going to be very similar to your return on investment because you don't have a huge number of other costs like your mortgage to come out. But the gross yield is just that, it's a gross number. Unfortunately, it doesn't take into account any of the other charges so on a monthly basis, things like management fees, things like insurance, and on a one-off purchase basis, it misses out uh, uh, fees like the solicitor's fees, the refurbishment works, um, and any other kind of mortgage fees that are also involved. So that's the gross yield, there's pros and cons of using it. The other way that we can do it is using the return on investment. The return on investment is the amount of return that you make per annum divided by the investment that you've put in. It's commonly referred to as the return on capital employed, R-O-C-E. So R-O-I and R-O-C-E are very similar um, uh, numbers. And what they take into account, unlike the gross yield, is they take into account the uh, mortgage costs, and they take into account the management costs of uh, ongoing management to run the property. It also takes into account the insurance costs. On the purchase side, it will take into account all of the costs that are involved with the purchase and setup of the, um, of the property investment. So things like the solicitor's legal fees, the mortgage broker's fees, survey fees, stamp duty, uh, refurbishment fees, any um, uh, property sourcing fees, project management fees, lettings fees, all of these kind of things are all taken to, into account in the return on capital employed, uh, also known as return on investment. And that's why as a company, that's what we tend to use, return on uh, investment or return on capital employed, because it shows you a much more holistic picture of what your actual return is. Then you can also have your return on capital on the rental side, and then also on the capital side. So on the rental side, it's on a month to month basis, on a year to year basis, what is the return that you're making in terms of the rental income uh, and expenses that you're getting from a rental perspective. You then also have the capital return or capital growth. And those numbers are about the increase in the value of the property over time. Again, they're calculated on an annual basis, uh, but they are in addition to the rental return. So as a company, what we like to look at is the overall return and the overall return takes into account the rental return and the expected capital return. Now, of course, no one really can read the future. No one knows what the capital return is going to be, but we have our best guesses. We have our best estimates of what we think the capital return is going to be based on what's going on in the industry and what's going on in the city. So as a company, we use the return on capital employed, also known as the rental return, return on investment. And that's broken down into the rental return and then the capital growth as well. So we have the rental return plus the capital growth, which equates to the overall return that you're going to be receiving uh, on this property per annum. That's the other important point here. All of these numbers are per annum. So there you go, hope that explains things. If you've got any other questions about how to measure returns in property, just uh, type in the comments and I'm more than happy to answer them. Otherwise, I hope that's been useful for you. Thanks guys.